Hey there, welcome back to The Truth of Somewhere, the Conspiracy Theory Podcast. Megan, today what are we talking about? So today we're going to talk about something that's sort of a conspiracy, but sort of not. Mm-hmm. So it all sounds like a conspiracy, and it breeds more conspiracy theories, but most of what I'm going to actually talk about today is like 99% true. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. <coughs> I'm uh, excited to hear what we're talking about, if most of it's true, then. Yeah. So, true facts. In 1978, the Defense Intelligence Agency worked with a private company called SRI International to start a project called Project Stargate. The program was focused on mental and psychic abilities and their potential to use in military and intelligence communities. And their initial focus was on, uh, quote, remote viewing, where a psychic could see foreign lands without actually being there. Okay. Uh, and then it soon branched out to uh, further types of clairvoyance, il- infiltrating networks with the mind, and then some straight up eleven powers, like killing someone with a psychic thought. So this sounds like that George Clooney movie. Actually, I'm going to get to that. Goats. Is that yeah, 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 yeah. The men who stare at goats. Stare at goats. So that was okay, actually based okay. off of this program. That's a that's a movie based on true events. Okay. Excellent okay. movie. It's got George Clooney and Ewan McGregor. If you haven't seen it, you mm-hmm, should see it. It's mm-hmm. pretty funny. Yeah, it is pretty funny. It's uh. It's definitely his style of humor, I would say. George like, Clooney. George Clooney, mm-hmm. kind of dry, but mm-hmm. um, situational humor. And it was it was during that time when like <laughs> big names were doing kind of more independent style mm-hmm. films. Mm-hmm. So like Burn After Reading came out around the same time, and that had sure. Brad Pitt in it. Also, really funny movie, so you should watch it. Anyway, the program was overseen at least in part by General Albert Stubblebine the Third, who claimed to be a psychic himself. Okay. Uh, the the Men Who Stare at Goats film was uh, based on on this program, and the film chronicled a particular part of the program in which men tried to alter goats or other animals through their thoughts. Okay. And it sounds ridiculous and like a conspiracy theory on its own, but declassified material regarding Project Stargate show it to be true. Project So you can actually go Stargate. and do the, like, Federal Information Act. Yeah, yeah. Freedom of Information Act, uh, and see all of the declassified material about this. And it's, like, real thing actual thing there's lots of crazy things uh, mm-hmm. that our government has done yeah. i mean it's it's interesting that there's so much stuff that after a certain period of time can be released mm-hmm. uh which makes me think of the fact that the um kennedy information over the assassination has been partially released but not but entirely not, entirely. not mm-hmm. entirely there's still stuff in that that they view as um sensitive information that could impact yeah yeah so yeah. the intelligence community in yeah. some way yeah. yeah yeah um but so there were actually men staring at goats there were actually men staring at goats they were trying to alter goats in some mm-hmm. way using the power of their thoughts okay uh the plan was to create psychic assassins and there were allegedly successful attempts and some sort of proof that negative mental energy directed at mold would inhibit its growth which that's actually like Wow. There's a lot of scholarly research about that. I was actually reading an article not that long ago um, where negative and positive energy can impact the growth rates of microorganisms. So, like, there was one where they conducted it with uh, school children, mm-hmm. and, like, they took, I think it was, like, a um, like a little Tupperware container of cooked rice, and on one of them they put the word, like, fool, and on the other word they put the word, like, great. Something, something negative, something positive, and okay. they stuck it in the classroom. And they told the children every day when they went to wash their hands after recess or after lunch or whatever that they had to look at those and read them. Mm -hmm. And so every day the kids looked at those and they read them. And by the end of a week or a month or whatever the time frame was, uh, the one that had the negative word written on the outside was like significantly more decomposed and like nasty. And the other one basically looked the same as it had when they put it out there. Yeah. I mean, is this like a peer reviewed test with multiple? Yeah, it was a peer reviewed research study. I'd like to see the research study. I'm willing to bet there are some... Uh, there's some other factor. There's some factor in there that they didn't... Uh, they're not accounting for. Because yeah. that just sounds this straight per- up like yeah. psychic level mumbo jumbo. This particular researcher has done several things uh-huh. in, in that vein of like mold growing hmm. um, worse based off of negative thoughts okay. or like... Um, like plants growing better when you speak positively that, to them. So when like you talk to plants, they actually thrive. Okay, so like we have some sort of magical energy that we can apparently put out and make plants grow apparently a particular way. I don't know. And if we're really negative, mold grows. But if we're positive, plants grow. 
if a positive mold doesn't thrive, I think was the idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But negative thoughts make mold thrive. I mean, I should have prefaced this with that you should get ready to roll your eyes real hard through this you one don't have to prefer- several times. You don't have to preface preference any of that that should just be expected yeah, no but this one in particular i was like oh man as i was typing i was like Corey's gonna roll his eyes so, so hard over this one i just um i just i wonder what biologically makes mold and plants grow differently because i mean if if you were to uh i don't know yell at a blind and deaf thing that could feel vibrations in the air i'll give it that okay. i'll give it that it could mm-hmm. be that's that's a stretch for as far as what mold and plants uh, could possibly feel. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's say that they can feel that. Okay. Uh, at some level, can they really tell the difference between negative energy and positive energy? And let's let's define the word energy in this mm-hmm. context. There isn't one. Mm-hmm. I know. I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just telling you what... What the research says. Well, maybe the it's mold didn't fault. align its chakras. Maybe the mold didn't align its chakras correctly. Maybe yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, so Uli Geller, who is a famed illusionist who claims to have actual psychic powers okay. and is most well known for uh, bending spoons on stage with the power of his mind. There's like all these like really hokey pictures of mm. him holding bent spoons. Okay. Um, so he was recruited for Project Stargate, but he says he was asked to kill a pig with his mind. And... Um, he refused to do so and he left the program. Not because he couldn't kill the pig, but, like, he basically was like, my powers are not for harm. I will uh-huh. not do that. Like, morality-wise. Well, that's a good way to get out of a situation right. where you don't want to blow your cover. Or you're like, I'm just a stage magician, man. Like, Ugh, no, I mean, he fully, do it. He fully claims that he is truly a psychic. Mm-hmm. Truly, truly sure. claims lots it. lots of people. And lots of people believe it because, I mean, like, we went and saw Mind Freak. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Vegas, and remember, like we know he's an illusionist. Like he oh. makes no, he makes mm-hmm. no aspersions about like being an actual psychic. He's like, I'm an illusionist, and I'm a master at my trade, and he's yeah. amazing. And when you go and you see these things, you truly sit there and go, How did he do that? Holy fuck, magic! Yeah, right. Yeah. So people believe that Uli Geller is an actual psychic, and he he the difference is claims that he is. Whether or not he is, I don't know. I very seriously doubt that he is. But. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's a point where you get so good at what you do, you start to believe yourself. Maybe. That's, That's fair. kind of where my my thought is on that. I think I get frustrated with um, the whole idea of psychics, because I, I feel yeah. like a lot of times um, psychics take advantage of people who are like down on their luck or have lost a loved one and they're like oh i can reach your loved one from beyond the grave for the low low price of 5.99.99 yeah you know right, what I mean? right so or or there's a genie in your house you should buy <laughs> these incense uh, yeah right right so, i've never been in your house but there's a genie in it there's a genie in it i'm not saying this from a, uh any secondhand experience mm-hmm. or anything no uh, so during the Cold War, the project began to grow into several other projects, mm-hmm. and the United States was concerned that the Soviets were using psychic powers to spy, influence American operatives, and even disabling nuclear weapons with you psychic know, powers. It's not that crazy to me to think that we would at least test the, the possibility. Sure. Well, apparently Russia had, like, quite the paranormal branch of its, um, like, mm-hmm. uh, intelligence community there in russia like they were they were heavily looking into this kind of stuff so it makes sense that we would be heavily looking into it to counter their heavily looking into it which is basically what we did with russia for like 20 years right it's just a a bunch of dudes staring at livestock Mm -hmm. (laughs) trying to fight each other that's the war front that we don't speak about yeah (laughs) so the u.s steps up their projects to counteract the perceived threat from russia uh, and spin-off projects carried names like Gondola Wish, Sunstreak, and even MK Ultra, which we've talked about before. MK Ultra was the one where they were feeding unknowing subjects like LSD, uh-huh. like yeah. luring them into a room with the pretense of them like buying a hooker and then like <laughs> forcing them full of LSD. Sure, seeing if and the like CIA agents were like sitting behind a two-way mirror, like smoking and drinking uh-huh. and laughing about it. That's yeah. That's weren't they what... partaking in it too? Yeah, that's yeah. what happened. With MK Ultra. Oh boy! So yeah. that's these are the kind of programs we're talking about because there was just like no fucking oversight 
for this shit in the 70s and 80s. There just wasn't. Well, no, a lot of stuff just didn't have the same level of regulations that we do Mm -mm. today. That's why deregulation's a bad thing sometimes. Uh, Yeah, well, well, but, you know, sometimes it's good to deal with uh, the bad. Just to see how far. Sometimes it's good to see how far you can let something go. Well, it's kind of like we wouldn't know a lot of the stuff if we didn't let things go too far. Like Stanford Prison Experiment. Yeah. Where, like, Mm -hmm. that went nuts went sideways real fast and they let it go on longer than they probably should have I'm, but they did end that program be- way before that program was supposed wasn't to it end. supposed to go for like a month and it only went for a week yeah because like people, people got too far like, in their role oh i have power and like people naturally gravitate so much to power and they take advantage of it that's terrifying yeah that's terrifying um, but we wouldn't know that about the human psyche had that experiment not been allowed to go where it went I mean, you could say the same thing uh, about the uh, Nazi medical research. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's th- that's, not... you take the good with the bad is what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. you There's take, a silver take the lining. The There's a lot the of things that we learned from that. that. We might now be able to learn of the technology that we have, mm-hmm. but it would have been decades because they did some... They did some atrocious heinous things. Things. Heinous things. Like it was awful. Like keeping people alive and stringing their intestines out in front of them to watch how food passes through it. Mm-hmm. Like, ugh, just horrible, horrible things. But we learned from that. Oh yeah. And we know how that stuff works now, and pe- more people are living because of that information. It sucks that that had to happen to somebody and the situations that it happened in. But we, we did learn from it. Yeah. Um. Well, on that happy note. On that happy note. <laughs> uh, we go to the early 80s, and a spin-off project called Project Jedi began. Mm-hmm. The project's aim was to create special forces soldiers that could use psychic powers for both spying and weaponized offensive purposes. Uh, they developed what they called, quote, oh boy, bio-cybernaut training combined technologies of biofeedback neurofeedback, cyberphysiology, and contemplative inner methods of mastery drawn from the vast array of contemplative science traditions. Can you say that five times fast? No, I cannot. And? Please don't make me repeat it. Can that be our title? (laughs) If that is what you would like the title to be, you can pull it right out of my notes. Ridiculous. If you had trouble following the mumbo jumbo that I just said, it essentially boils down to mind over matter. Okay. That's essentially what it boils down to. Um, so this supposedly helped sharpen marksmanship to near superhuman levels. Okay. And they learned to shoot with high accuracy in half the time of traditional training oh. and could even perform while blindfolded. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see how those, um, like, what were they performing in? Were they performing in, like, a scenario they've done a hundred times? times? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it was also claimed that these methods helped soldiers master foreign languages quickly. Uh, but my favorite is that they were able to control bodily functions such as blood flow, healing rate, pain reception, and could manipulate chemicals released in the brain such as endorphins for the purpose of enhancing physical strength. Which, some of this doesn't sound so far out there to me. That it's like, sounds it's possible. It's people like, like learning how to fool like polygraph tests, uh-huh. right? Like learning to control yeah. their stress levels and their heart rate. I've... I've um, read stuff about, like, um, Buddhist monks that can get their heart rate, their heart to stop for a moment Mm -hmm. so that their heart doesn't actually pump for a couple of moments and then it starts up again, which is something that I imagine would take a lot of control and a lot of of body awareness. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing where I think that you learn that from lots of meditation because you have nothing else to concentrate but your butt on your body. So this would be the same idea. Mm -hmm. You have nothing else to concentrate on. But what your body's doing, so you learn how to control that stuff. That's why it's mind over matter, because it's like you trick telling your mind how to control your body, right? Essentially, which mm-hmm. is, I think is actually pretty cool and makes sense from an intelligence standpoint and a military standpoint. Right, I could see this being a very useful skill for a um, CIA agent. Yes, to that's have. what I was thinking too. Um, so Project Jedi only lasted about six months. But the larger umbrella of Project Stargate was passed along to the CIA, who ran the program until 1995. Wow. Yeah, long time, over 20 years Yeah, that that program ran. Uh, the CIA then declassified documents pertaining to Project Stargate and claimed that any of the projects within Stargate ever... Um, I got lost. 
I apologize. Yes. They claimed that none of the projects within Stargate ever saw verifiable promise for use in the intelligence or military communities. It's a long time Obviously, to figure that out. yeah, right. <laughs> Modern day theorists believe that Project Stargate or sister projects under different names continue today in the intelligence communities, Ooh. which I'm sure they probably do. That's yeah, that's, a, that's kind of a no brainer. Yeah. There's probably something, especially with like the kind of Project Jedi kind of idea, where you're like learning to control your body and like that kind of stuff. Probably still is researched. I don't know. But I think what you said where it's like, that was a long time to figure out that nothing happened is really valid. Yeah. Uh, So I got, I've got two, two thoughts on that. It's a long time to figure out nothing happened is a, is a good way to say that um, we were just pumping money into things that people didn't want to get rid of because people knew that that was a good gig to have. Mm -hmm. It was a good Cush gig where you did nothing. Sure. And people are always going to try to find that stuff. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are, what, how hard you work to get wherever you are. You go, hey, man, I'm going to go work for the Jedi Project, mm-hmm. and I'm going to do absolutely nothing. I'm going to get high and do nothing. Nothing, sure. Right. So I think that that's one aspect of it. And I think the more conspiracy theory aspect of it is the... Well, they're just not telling us they the whole truth. They obviously learned something. They yeah. learned something and they're not telling us that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think another thought to add to that is there is this, um, I can't, there's a curve and I can't remember what it's called, but it's essentially, it has to do with the amount of effort you put into something. Mm-hmm. And um, it actually is involved with people who become ac- expert with things where like when you first start learning something within the first you know, I don't know, normally a short time period, a couple of weeks, you learn tons of things. Every day you're learning something new and that, that curve has a really steep incline until you get to a certain point And that incline starts to taper off until it almost hits what looks like a plateau where you're only learning something new every month, every year, something like that. This is where the professionals sit Mm -hmm. where they're like, I just keep doing the same thing and I rarely learn anything new. I do keep perfecting it and making it a little bit better, and I do progress, but it doesn't feel like much of a progression. Right. And I wonder if the projects showed that kind of um, tapering where they're like, is it really worth the amount of effort to get people to this point, or are people good enough at what they do already? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes the amount of resources to get someone to this point, and then to get the amount of resources you have to put in in each point is exponentially more and more and more and more. And exponentially is the word to use for that. Uh, More uh, costly to learn more, right? Mm -hmm. Like a professional has to put in where you could learn something new in 80 hours and become decent at it Mm -hmm. for a professional to get one step better. They have to put hundreds, thousands of hours into it. Right. Sure. Sure. So oh, yeah. you're just thinking that, like, even if they did succeed in making this happen, it just took too much effort to make it happen. Right, and it may not even be worth it. And then you have, to, you have to find in people who are inherently already psychic or open to that. It's kind of like um, Deadpool, where they, like, they find the people who have, like, psychic underpinnings, and they're like, we're gonna break them until other something really oh, good yeah. happens. Yeah. And they become, like, mutants, or they just die. Yeah, they find, um recessive i think it's recessive or unactivated x uh um not parasites what am i thinking? x chromosomes x cro- no, no, no 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 chromosomes x genes x genes yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and they try to get them to to push them to the i point think where that's activate. maybe In, kind of the yeah. idea so you would have to find people who are already psychically open and aware before you yeah. can even do this and, and then, then the number of people work. who are openly and psychically aware if that is a thing, like a true thing, if that is actually something that exists, the number of people is alarmingly small because we are so skeptical of that. It can't be something that's particularly common. You know, I will, I will say that as much as a skeptic as I am in most things, I think there's some sort of truth to some psychic things. Mm -hmm. I do. I don't think, um, telekinetics exists. No, I don't think I can alter your body. In a way. You can't stare at a goat and kill it? I can't stare at a goat and kill Mm -hmm. it. I can't make something levitate. I can't do that kind of stuff. But I actually think that our brains are susceptible to the um, electromagnetic waves of those that surround us. Okay. And um, they've already done these studies where uh, they've they've actually um, 
they've put these things on these these guys' heads and they had them play video games. And one guy was just thinking about playing the video game and he could see the screen and the other guy had the controller. And it didn't come out working like, well, the guy could just see it and the other guy did all the inputs, right? They both obviously couldn't see each other. One person couldn't even see the game. He just had the controller in his hand. But the guy was actually like his, his thumb was twitching. Mm-hmm. And like he was getting like thoughts from this other person showing that there is some sort of connection. So what I'm saying is we've all been there where we've had a conversation with someone or we've been in a room with somebody and suddenly we both think of the same exact word. Mm-hmm. And suddenly we're both laughing at the same thing and someone was like, I was just about to say that. And sure. And I think there's something to say about people becoming attuned with one another. Sure, that makes sense. And it is scientifically proven that our brains put off, um, I'm not positive it's electromagnetic waves or what, but we actually do put a signal a out signal of our out. head, sure. right? Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's electromagnetic waves because our brain uses a lot of electricity to, um, to like bounce between neurons and things like that. So... I think that two people can get on, quote unquote, the same Same wavelength, wavelength. right? Where you're picking up what I'm thinking Mm -hmm. because I am thinking it and those signals are coming out of my brain and you're becoming sensitive to that. Sure. Um, I think it takes, I think some people are more sensitive to other people than uh, certain people. Like people who are like super empathetic. Right. And I was also thinking more on the lines of some people are just like, maybe their brains think on a similar wavelength. So they can read someone else's wavelength more easily, right? And they're not going to pick up the whole picture, but they might get a few thoughts, a few words, Mm -hmm. a few things here and there that the two of them can sync up on. There might also be something to say about the fact that people are already just really similar um, and there is nothing to the wavelength thought. No, I think that that's valid because I also think that some people are more sensitive to other paranormal type things. Like some people are more sensitive to ghosts than others. And I know that you don't think that's true. You smiled at me before I smiled at you. You should have seen the look on your face. It's okay. It was me trying to shut it's, down. It's, I was just picking up on your electromagnetic brain that's, waves. That's what it, that's is. What it was. Yes, yes. I'm just so close to you and I understand you so well I, uh, now that I just yeah. can read the tiniest nuances of your face. Uh-huh. Anyway, we're going to move on because we already know how both of us feel about ghosts. And, and if you don't, you can listen to an earlier episode. Uh, that's true. <laughs> uh... We can get into some of the more interesting things we can find declassified documents on regarding Project Stargate. Okay. Uh, Remote viewing, uh, I mentioned before, it's a type of clairvoyance in which a psychic with extrasensory perception, or ESP, uses their ability to see something far away. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in 1986, one of the remote viewers was asked to go to Saturn's moon Titan, and the viewer said that there was a base on Titan... And the operators of that base appeared to be humans. Oh. And she claims to have observed, a y- uh, observed two young males working at a control panel under the supervision of a female. Interesting they chose Titan because a tit- Titan is one of the uh, closest um, orbital bodies in our solar system that we think that there might actually be. I think we've actually determined there's liquid water on it. Well, maybe that's why they it's chose It's a moon Titan. Um, on believe jupiter i said uh, what it was saturn. oh saturn i'm sorry mm-hmm. but anyways yeah it's uh anyways yeah they believe that we could potentially live on titan so that's that's interesting yeah that's an interesting tidbit that i didn't know so according to her she saw at least humanoid mm. we'll never know if she's uh right or wrong until we get there yep Uh, The same viewer also completed two other remote viewing sessions, but on Earth. Mm -hmm. She was asked to view Mount Hayes in Alaska, where she saw two entities, her words, working outside of a structure. And inside the structure, the viewer found a human-looking technician working on a strange machine. Mm -hmm. The viewer said the humanoid could, for lack of a better word, see her and invited her to take a closer look at the machine. So, like, he picked up on her psychic presence there. Uh Uh-huh. Um... And another time she was visiting somewhere in the Southern Hemisphere and she found inhuman robot-like creatures and a hairless, pale humanoid that seemed to be aware of her presence as well. Oh, aliens. 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 Yeah, yeah. In the Southern All Hemisphere. All things that she can't prove. All things that cannot be proven. Yeah, yeah. You're correct. She couldn't, like, tell people what were, you know, what was happening in the room next to her? That's not what they asked her to look at. I know, why they not, They gave though? her specific points to look at. I don't know. But why it's not? not tell fault. me what's going on in the room next to us. I don't know. 
A different remote viewer identified only as Subject 52 was given specific coordinates and simple cues. Mm -hmm. Researchers were hoping she would zero in on a Navajo necklace that was stored at the geographic location. Mm -hmm. So they knew what she should be looking for. And the viewer found herself surrounded by unfamiliar architecture and watching a left-handed craftsman working on a beautiful gold or steel chain. So basically they think that she, like, not only did she zero in on that necklace, but she, like, zeroed in through time. Because that's a big thing is that they were doing a lot of research about, like, that essentially, I'm going to call them seers. Mm -hmm. The seers could, like, see through time. Okay. And so they could see way back in time and see things associated to a certain geographic location or a certain object. Mm -hmm. And so that was a lot of research that they were doing. Okay. But this viewer in particular happened to see someone making the necklace that they were hoping that they would zero in on. Interesting. Which is pretty interesting. That is interesting. I wonder if someone... Dropped a cue. Dropped a cue. That's what I wondered, too. Um, Because a lot of times psychics, self-proclaimed psychics, are just, like, really good at reading people's body language and picking up on their cues and Mm -hmm. their emotions. So I I do wonder if this viewer in particular just happened to pick up on something. Asking the right questions. Yeah. So one viewer completed dozens of missions for the CIA... He was a young army officer named Joe Mm McMonagall. At one point, McMonagall was asked to set his sights on Mars at one million years before the current era. At that time, McMonagall used a sensory deprivation tank to see a sandy pyramid thought to be roughly 12 miles tall. Mm -hmm. And it appeared that some sort of catastrophic, catastrophic event had occurred on Mars. So he went back further in time, and he found the pyramid to be a me- to be metallic in nature, and he could see vague forms of gigantic, very thin people. Oh. They um, could sense that McMonagall was there, and uh, he they told him that they were an ancient race, and they were doomed to die if those who left in search of another home did not return. Oh. So it turns out that McMonagall was specifically asked to view the Sidonia region of Mars, uh, this region was first photographed by the Viking 1 spacecraft in 1976 mm-hmm. and shows unexplained geographical formations that do indeed resemble pyramids. Resemble loosely. Loosely resemble pyramids, but the idea That's is the that faces, too. they were, yeah, the faces, uh, mm-hmm. they were built like millions of years ago, right? And then there was some sort of catastrophic mm-hmm. weather event similar to like what wiped out the dinosaurs. And it's since, like, covered those pyramids in sand and stuff. So that's that's the theory. I don't know if Opportunity has been in this section of Mars to film what those are or not. I, th- I think we have satellites that are just, like, mapping Mars. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if we know anything more about those other than what I researched specifically about Project Stargate. But I thought that was a fun little tidbit. And, uh... It would be really interesting if we do get to Mars someday and they actually are pyramids. I think that would be just fucking cool. Oh, yeah. Not of course it would be cool to say that we found life somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I was actually uh, I was watching a video, actually, that was talking about if we find life somewhere else, it's really bad news. Especially if it's all dead. That's what I got for you, though. Okay. Cool. That's I it. mean, uh, I don't feel like I believe any more or any less in psychics after this. Uh, which is fine. I don't mm-hmm. believe any more. Actually, sometimes I do believe more in the conspiracy after we've gone through the episode. I believe that it's it's more probable or possible. Like, but... Dyatlov Pass was one where both of us were like, oh, there was some sort of government cover-up there. Sure. Like, for but sure. But this, I absolutely believe, is more of a, was more of a money pit than it was anything else. Sure. I think it's more likely I, I... that they didn't find anything mm-hmm. and that they just said, well... It's, uh, it is what, it is what it is, and it's just sucking up money. I don't disagree, but I also think that there is a really good chance that there is a project similar, Mm -hmm. um, especially in regards to things like meditation and learning to control your bodily functions. I feel like that is something that could very well still be being researched for intelligence communities. For spies, it would be, like, amazing to be able to have that. I think it's more likely that that's been absorbed into something else. Sure. That's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, and it may not be under the guise of psychic anymore. But yeah, no, you're it might right. Be something it's probably that not paranormal a, related anymore. Yeah, uh, something that, you know, a special sect of the CIA has to go through some training or something like that, you know, uh, like ninjas. Sure. Um, 
But now that I've mentioned it, and breaking news, I want to mention it to you guys. Russia has reopened the investigation into Dyatlov Pass. Oh, we're going to have to do another so, episode. So uh, there will likely be a follow-up episode at some point on what they do or do not find. I am going to guess that they will say those people just died out in the cold and they had the the hypothermic crazies, because I can't remember what that is called, but where you get hypothermic and then you start acting all weird mm-hmm. before you die. Mm-hmm. They're going to say that that happened. Um, that is my theory, that they are, because, I mean, it's Russia. They're not going to come out and say, oh yeah, we were testing some crazy nuclear bomb or radioactive bomb or something over there or some no, special radioactive airplane. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We don't yeah. know what they're going to say. Is, that's just my theory. Mm-hmm. Take it or leave it. And with that, you can find us <laughs> on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at TTAS Podcast. True. Uh, you can email us at thetruthissomewherepodcast at gmail.com. Yes. If you like what we're doing, you can jump on over to iTunes and leave us a good review. It helps other people find the podcast. Also, tell other people... Make other people listen, pin them down, open their eyes, clockwork orange style. Don't do that. Don't or do that. do. If, you know, maybe <laughs> if you make them listen to every single episode, one after another, they might just come back for more. Maybe. And I would not be upset with that. I wouldn't be upset either. If you really like what we're doing enough to hold down your friends and open their eyes, clockwork orange style, you can <laughs> jump on over to Patreon. Uh, also at TTAS Podcast on Patreon. You can yep. get videos and special stuff over there. Might be um, uh, a little less stress for everyone if you did that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe just show them. Yeah, maybe just jump over to Patreon and don't hold your friends down. I don't know. You do you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find merch at the truth is somewhere. Uh, dot threadless dot com true and show notes over at the truth is somewhere dot com and I think that is literally everything I could possibly have to tell you. Oh, the Facebook group. T-T-I-S podcast group. It's true. Yep. There you go. Yeah. That's uh, it. I think that's it. The truth is somewhere, guys. Keep looking. Can you tell what I'm thinking right now? <laughs>